to go to Southampton County where the whole Nat Turner story took place. special episode. This one is called Legacy, the carrying of the torch of Nat Turner. And I'm here with a special guest, Mr. Khalifa. Ms. Khalifa, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. I thank you. It's a pleasure thank to have you. you here. Yes, sir. And it's a pleasure to be in your company. Yes, sir. Same here. You took the words out of my mouth, man. Mm -hmm. I, I got a few questions to ask you because we have to educate <clears throat> our youth today. All right. There's a, there's a story that you have and you tell it, I think, better than anyone that I've heard. So you have the story of Nat Turner and you know the ins and outs of this thing. First, I want to ask a question before we get into that. Um, what is your mission? Like not many people will take and make their their life about, you know, your author, you publish, you have a lot of stories that you pass on. What is the mission behind all of that? Uh the mission behind the uh, story of Nat Turner, mm -hmm. the reason we own, we're on to Nat Turner, mm -hmm. is to preserve his legacy and history mm -hmm. because his, his legacy is wrapped up in the history of African people mm -hmm. and our resistance to white supremacy oppression. Okay. And Nat Turner is the m most successful, he was the most successful black freedom fighter who took the fight to the enemy. Mm -hmm. He had no recourse. Mm -hmm. He had no other choice. He just mentioned one time that black people would one day be free and they, they almost beat him to death. Wow. So I've had people ask me, well, why didn't he take a more peaceful approach to it? Why didn't he? I, he couldn't even breathe freedom in, as, as a child of slave. Mm -hmm. So he fought for it. Okay. And we had many, many others who didn't take it laying down. Yeah. They fought back for it. And he fought so that we don't have to do what he did in mm -hmm. order to achieve our freedom. We might not have to do what he did yeah. in order to achieve our freedom. Uh, the story of Nat Turner is just so full of so many lessons mm -hmm. that I have incorporated into my life as best I could, and I'm still uncovering. Mm -hmm. I'm determined that there will be at least one uh, book or one person who tried to keep it as it was, mm -hmm. you know. I heard you mention the word legacy, and you know, that's what we titled this episode. Um, what does that word mean to you, and what should it mean to all of us? We all have a legacy. Mm -hmm. But whether you're conscious of it or not, the legacy is just a history of the work and the, uh, the things that you did during your life that made life more bearable for other people. Gotcha. The legacy of a, a person, uh, you can look at his legacy and determine how did he live his life. Mm -hmm. You know, was he a righteous human or was he a, a, a crook? You know, yeah. you, those, are, those are legacies too. How do you feel about today's youth? Today's youth, um, why is it important for them to know um, what Nat Turner did? You should learn from Nat Turner that you can be as black as you want to be mm -hmm. and still be successful. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially in today, mm -hmm. or they can look at me. Be as black and strong as you can be, mm -hmm. but you're going to still be successful. Knowledge gets you in a place of power every time. Absolutely. Wisdom, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what we want to show here. Yeah. We want to let people understand, though you may not know what a rite of passage is, you know, aggression and ignorance doesn't make you a man, you know? No. That knowledge and knowing how to guide and build a legacy for those people that are behind you. And that's what we're here today. We're going to come back after the break and I want to talk more about the story of Nat Turner and why he's so important to us and where we sit today. All right. OK. This is okay. the radio okay. show. Don't you touch that dial. We'll be right back.
Here at the Vadio Show, progress is the process. If you feel the same, represent and pre-order your t-shirt at thevadioshow.com or contact us at thevadioshow at gmail.com. We got a lot of knowledge and a lot of great information on Nat Turner. Now it's time for my favorite part, the actual Nat Turner tool, where we can see play by play and place by place where the whole history of Nat Turner happened. Take a ride with me. All right, Miss Khalifa. The story of Nat Turner, our elders tell us, advise us, never began recounting the history of African people unless we began on the continent of Africa. Okay. So we know that Nat Turner's mother and his grandmother was captured, first captured on the continent of Africa and brought into Southampton County. Uh, they were brought in Southampton County to the auction block. It's at a place called Cross Keys, mm -hmm. which would be one of the stops on the Nat Turner Trail tour. But the history of Nat Turner in Southampton County began in 1797 when Nat Turner's mother, Nancy, and his mother, grandmother, her mother, was brought into Southampton County by Benjamin Turner, one of the largest uh, land owners in the county, therefore one of the largest slave owners. Mm. Uh, this was in 1797. In 1799, Nancy became pregnant. And uh, she hated the pregnancy so much. And that's one of the indications that it was a hated pregnancy. And uh, it's just about assured that she was raped mm. by Benjamin Turner. Uh, she, she hated the pregnancy so much that she tried to abort the baby. And they had to tie her up in order for her to give birth to keep her from killing the baby. Wow. Uh, but fortunately for us, unfortunately for them, she was unsuccessful in her attempt to abort the baby. So in, on October the 2nd, 1800, Nat Turner was born. He was born with a veil over his face, and when you're born with a veil over your face, it portends that you're destined to be somebody great. Somebody great in the hands of the Almighty. And that's a quote that's uh, laced throughout the story about Nat Turner as he was uncovering the fact that he was a special human on the planet. He grew, grew with the understanding that he was expected to be a great man. And uh, uh, one of the things Nat Turner recount, when he was three or four years old, his mother overheard him uh, telling his playmates something that had happened before he was born. Before he was born. And this lended itself to the fact that he would be a prophet one day, to the thought that he would be a prophet one day. A prophet forecasting things that's to happen in the future. Uh, and then other things like learning how to read, according to Nat Turner, he had no uh, recollection about exactly when he learned how to read uh, and write. But he was crying one day and somebody gave him a, a book to stop him from crying to play with. And to the astonishment of the grown-ups, he started reading the book. Mm. And so word spread in the community about he was a special man with special intelligence. And at an early age, he began to act the role. He started experimenting in making certain objects. This was in its, in its youth. Uh, to my understanding, his confessions, he tried to make uh, ink, uh, paper, and gunpowder. 
to some of the things that he said he tried to make. And he had no doubt that he could have been successful had he had the right materials. That was the confidence that Turner had in his ability. In 1810, up to 1810, Nat Turner did not work in the field with the other uh, captive Africans. He was kept in the house, but in 1810, slave master Benjamin Turner died and went to hell. A lot of people don't like to, me to say he went to hell, but I can't imagine him being any other place than hell if there's such a place. When a large slave owner dies, there's both dread and jubilation in the slave community. The jubilation is that this cracker is dead now and he will not be able to visit the brutality on the people anymore. The dread is, and we want to pause right here because we're coming up on the first stop on the Nat Turner. We want to go slow, Evan. Uh, in the corner back here, legend has it mm. that this is the church that Benjamin Turner built after the, uh, the colonists defeated the British in the Revolutionary War. Can after we, the Revolutionary we Yeah, we, we can pull on down in front of the church so you can see the sign. It was built in eight, 1786. And as we see, this is a Protestant church. We're going to get out here. That's after the uh, Revolutionary, up to the Revolutionary War, the only legal church in North America was the Anglican Church. And after they defeated the British, they didn't want to have anything else to do with mm -hmm. the Anglican Church. Gotcha. So they found this Protestant church. Now we'll pause here and take some questions. Anybody have them? And that's the corner where it's alleged that he taught. Here, they're in that corner over there. This is what was pointed out to me. I don't know how, you know how legends go. Mm -hmm. But we know he was not allowed to preach in the church. So they he had to preach outside. Preacher. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So you allow me to be a preacher, but I can't go in the church building. No, no, sir. <laughs> Crazy. No, sir. Man, it's got a feeling here, man. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm tripping, but I got a feeling when we pulled up here. Yes, sir. I don't know what that is, but um, I feel a certain energy here. Yes, that's, that's, that's energy. It's that amazing, time. man. Yeah. yeah, yes, sir. Yes, so this sir. is where it happened with this, his, his preaching. Is, this is where his in. preaching or, uh, started. You know, the slave owners, they made sure that their captives went to church. And the indoctrination started uh, at the very beginning. Let you me add, that's what I wanted to ask you too. I, I know that in slavery, um, and you know, I come from the Christian side of things, yes, but sir. in slavery, they used the Bible and uh, the misinterpretation of the Bible to enforce their rules and also to, uh, to keep the slaves docile. Yes. And I see it ironic that uh, Nat actually used this same Bible and in reading more scripture, he used that for his decision and to get his vision to actually do the revolt that he yes, did. Yes, yes. He, he became an authority on the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, he could quote it. Mm -hmm. He, he, he uh, perfected his reading and writing uh, coming out of the Bible. And he quotes scripture. And he received these visions that we're going to bring out some of the visions okay. that he had. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a visionary. We're still talking about the legacy of Nat Turner. And I'm here with Mr. Khalifa. Now, I got another question for you. Um, we talked about the youth on the last segment. Um, this one, I got to ask, man, why is that there's a detachment from our history and uh, we know more about uh, American history than black history? You probably know how I feel about my generation yeah. and what we accomplished during the 1960s. Mm -hmm. We did the job in the 1960s mm -hmm. and now with the work that we were doing, including Dr. King and Malcolm mm -hmm. and Stokey, uh, Kwame yeah. Ture, H. Rob Brown, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Huey P. Newton, mm -hmm. 
Uh, but us, the generation, the re- the main reason that we are detached, the youth are detached from their history, is we dropped the ball. Who dropped the ball? My generation. How do you feel? They that went way? into the corporate world. They didn't teach their children. Mm. They took it for granted. Okay. Something that they were free. They didn't have to teach them. They figured that everything was over. We good now. The elders during the 1960s, us in the 1960s, was teaching our children about the history. Mm-hmm. And some of those same elders, when they got into the 70s, mm-hmm. uh, you can't leave it up to the miseducation system of the United States of America yeah. to teach black history to black children. Yeah. It is not going to happen. It never happened and it never will. Yeah. They're teaching the part of the history that will perpetuate their story. But we still must teach our own. Yeah. That's the only assurance that they're going to get it. Mm-hmm. This, this point was driven home to me when I put my son in Hampton University in 1987. Okay. And they had one black history course. Wow. And then the students. He, he, in Hampton he, University? Yes. He and his his class kind yeah. of organized themselves mm-hmm. to try to lobby for more black history. They wouldn't do it, so they formed a club wow. to teach themselves black history. And that's when I realized that my son had been given the Chancellor Williams mm-hmm. and stolen legacy books like that to read, but these children didn't have the basic books. Yeah, They didn't even know what it meant to be to have black history. Well, I would think in the HBCU that you'd have uh, no. a buffet to choose from when it comes to black uh, history. Well, the preparation is to for the corporate gotcha. world. Gotcha. Corporate America don't like uh, strong black militant mm-hmm. people or educated people. Yeah. So the, the Negro who prepare our children for corporate America when they know uh, white oppressors don't like this, then they're not going to like this. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Fortunately, uh, that, uh, there's been an awakening across the board for yeah, black people. Yeah, some things going on. Man, yeah. I, I am so fortunate to, to be alive at this day and time to mm-hmm. see this awakening. Mm-hmm. Even in the ones who, who, you, who uh, uh, a couple of generations ago, you would say was completely lost. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, they're becoming awake. Let's yeah. put it that way. Something is something is happening. And so we always have to go back to the black youth. Mm-hmm. The black youth always figure it out. When we look at our history, almost every significant movement was precipitated by black youth. Nat Turner's army was an army of black youth, man. Mm. Nat Turner was 31. Mm. And soldiers in, in his army was in their teens, 13, wow. 14, 15. Wow. I didn't know. I didn't black know youth that. did it. So, so black youth, is, they, got, they, had, they got to figure out this, what's going on now. You telling me a few things that I didn't know. You know, I knew, you know, he had a certain amount of people. You know, they said, what, 40 to 50 um, yeah. people. But I didn't know they were that young. Speaking of the things that you're telling me that I didn't know, I want you to let you know our audience know a little bit more about Nat Turner's story. I know we're in Southampton County. If you didn't know that, we're mm-hmm. at you know Miss Khalifa's house out here. This is where it all really happened. You do a tour of the the Nat Turner um, yes, land and correct. where it yes. all happened, and uh, you do an awesome tour. There's another one actually going on. Uh, First, I want to tap into that because there's conflict in the stores, like words like uh, re- in, was it insurrection? Insurrection. Versus revolt. Could you talk to me about that a little bit and what happened? Insurrection is a rebellion internally mm-hmm. to the system mm-hmm. that's doing the oppressing. Okay. When you initiate a revolt, you want to overturn the system. Gotcha. You have exhausted all other measures. The only other measure to do is to, uh, turn it over and start all over again. So which one would you say, from your standpoint, that Nat Turner did? Nat Turner 
organize a, re, a, a black liberation army to engineer a revolt. Okay. He, he was out to, to free every black man, woman, and child. He had given up the internal part. Mm -hmm. He worked for many years the same way that Barack Obama worked for many years, mm -hmm. the same way that I worked for many years mm -hmm. as a community organizer. Yeah. And uh, as I realized, as Barack Obama realized, and, and, and we know that Nat Turner realized, however uh, good you are at organizing black people in the United States of America, it will not be sufficient to impact their lives. So mm. you need additional power. Okay. So Barack Obama went on into the system to get more power, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, I had to leave the community too. I didn't yeah. go that far, but yeah, you, but know. you, you left the, the starting <laughs> yeah. point. Yeah, because, but I knew I needed resources. Yeah, yeah. And I needed power. Yeah. Nat Turner had his origin. He came into the world uh, with the sign that he was to be a, a great man. He was to be a significant uh, human on the planet. Was this a prophecy? Um, or? Yes, it was a prophecy. He was born with a veil over his face. Mm. And a veil over your face indicates that you're going to be a, a great man, a great woman, a prophet, uh, uh, someone great in the hands of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. So he grew up with that kind of orientation that he, he was going to be great. And it's this and, parents pushed that. And, yes, he okay. he was uh, expected to be great. Okay. Uh, and and he 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 says in his confessions that once he realized he was expected to be great, mm -hmm. then he kind of clothed himself in mysticism. Mm -hmm. He was a great mystic. Okay. He was a great mystic. Uh, Nat Turner, he, he kind of kind of set himself up to act the part. Mm -hmm. That's a great lesson right there. Mm -hmm. Once you know what you want to be in life, you are permitted to start acting that way now. Gotcha. You know, but just don't believe your press releases as they say. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, don't overstep. But uh, he, he grew up as a, as a child um, uh, tutored by his grandmother. Mm -hmm. Now, he, his grandmother, his maternal grandmother, and his actual mother, Nancy, they came into Southampton County in 1797. Mm -hmm. And we hear about his grandmother, his maternal grandmother at that time. But then in the confessions, he's also talking about grandmother who, who, uh, taught him about uh, religion, mm -hmm. you know, and she was the one who was making these predictions about him. They gotcha. said he was too smart to be raised. Mm. And if he was ever raised, he would never be any good to anyone as a slave. Because of his intelligence. Yes. Gotcha. That's what he got from her. But that was his paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. They call her old Bridget. But we don't hear any more about his maternal grandmother and very little about his mother yeah. after that, mm -hmm. you know. But we know they took the children from the family so they wouldn't be raised properly. Uh, so, but he, he grew up knowing that he was special, mm -hmm. you know. In the time that, that his mother overheard him telling his playmates when he was three or four years old, something that had happened before he was born, mm -hmm. that just kind of sewed it up. They just but saw him as a prophet. Right. Because he knew things that he couldn't, he wasn't here to see, uh, to, to be able to tell that story. Yeah, yes, sir. Gotcha. Okay. And okay. then one time he says that he was crying and they gave him a book to, you know, to pacify him. And to the amazement of the people, he started reading the book. Wow. You know? And how old was he at this time? Uh, I guess five or six. Now, I heard about um, his first owner teaching him different languages and teaching him how to read. How did, how did that? Now, to me, that's one of the biggest lies okay. that's ever been told about Nat Turner. Because hmm. that's what I'm saying. There's been some misconceptions. I've heard different stories. I have never seen any documentation to that. 
Gotcha. Uh, Cause the way they telling it, and they they got a, a few documentaries out there that this man it was a, it was a man that taught him um, how to read, taught him different languages. They told him that it wasn't smart for him to be teaching a, a black man, a black slave, that, and that's how he got his intelligence. And he went on to preach the gospel to um, other slaves and things like that until he read more into the Bible and found inter misinterpretations. And he used the the word that he got from the Bible to do his revolt. Now, That's how the story is being told. Now I know that Nat Turner's uh, intelligence and precociousness was such mm -hmm. that the whole neighborhood knew it, including the slave masters. Mm -hmm. Is practically assured that Nancy was raped. That's his mother. Yes. Okay. Nancy, his mother was raped by Benjamin Turner. Benjamin That's Turner saying, took an interest yeah. in that Turner. Mm -hmm. Now, if he did take an interest in that Turner to the extent where he would send him to school, as I heard uh, one of the relatives in that Turner recounted that that fallacy, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had, Benjamin Turner had other children, illiterate other children. Yeah. So he why would he teach? By the school. Why would he send? They didn't even have those schools. Got you. Okay. You know, so uh, I, I I don't see how that could. Well, it'll fly unless we tell the tell the story. That's how they're telling it on the History yeah. Channel too. If they have documentation to that, they should bring it forth. Nobody showed any documentation or gave any type of uh, uh, references of where they got that information from. Yes, so. I have read um, everything I can get my hands on about Nat Turner. That's Certain right I am. I don't read. There's some people I don't read. Mm -hmm. uh, it's useless. Why should I do that? Mm -hmm. uh, but I have seen nothing that indicates that he had any formal education. Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. Zero. Gotcha. You know, and that there, there's some indications that they uh, probably used him, like they use all genius black youth. Yeah. When they can. Right, and, and, took, and took the uh, the credit for his information. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I had ended back there when the uh, slave master, a slave owner, mm -hmm. excuse me, Benjamin Turner had died, and upon the death of a slave owner, uh, the jubilation in the slave quarters is the fact that he will not be able to visit brutality on them any longer or anymore. But there's also dread in the community because if he's a large slave owner, uh, the chances of all the slaves stand together, the captives stand together, uh, is, is, is remote. It wouldn't happen. So they knew families was going to be split up and sold away and never to be seen again forever. And uh, the ones who were fortunate enough, so to speak, to be sold to uh, uh, slave owners in the area, uh, they were the ones who were considered uh, fortunate in that they were not split up and sold down the river into the south. Uh, Nat Turner, uh, being the owner of Benjamin Turner, who had a son, he was inherited by his son. His son's name was Samuel Turner. And Samuel Turner uh, inherited uh, Nat Turner and his mother, Nancy, uh, and his grandmother, and we, they, don't, they don't say it was his maternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. We think it was his paternal grandmother. Old Bridget, they call her, the one who was the teacher of Nat Turner. So, uh, and another thing that slaves, uh, uh, captives, did not like to be done is being sold to a, uh, a small plantation, uh, a, a sold to a poor white trash because they had to work right out there in the field with the slave, mm. and a lot of times they were working to death. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, Samuel Turner was a small owner, and I guess he tried to uh, work to death. Slow down, Evan, coming to, coming to the next uh, 
right at the end of this, let's slow down, slow down, slow down. This, this field here is, is a crop now, but at the time of the revolt, this was the uh, home plantation area for Nat Turner. That was at the uh, Travis, uh, Joseph Travis plantation. Mm -hmm. And further on, as we get into the story, Joseph Travis and the next one over would be Salatha Francis, which was, which Salatha Francis was a member of that infamous uh, Francis family. Gotcha. Yeah. And then further on still would be uh, Elizabeth Turner. And we think that Elizabeth Turner was the widow of the original uh, Benjamin Turner. Wow. Slave owner. Okay, so we, we can go on. We're gonna go up here and make a, a right turn rather than go back there t uh, to the house of where Nat Turner's living descendant lived. Uh, Samuel Turner, did not succeed in overworking that Turner. He worked himself uh, sick himself. He took mm -hmm. sick in 1822, uh, or 1822. And when he took sick, uh, he, he hired an overseer to work Nat Turner. And the overseer, uh, according to a legend, uh, Annette Turner that he just mentioned that one day black people would be free and for this he uh, beat, he gave him a severe beating. Mm. Nat Turner reacted by running away. Up to that time with all the smarts Nat Turner had, he became a servant for black people. He started uh, uh, doing community organizing work even in his 20s, mm -hmm. uh, in his teens, you know, and he, and, but he ran away and he was gone for 30 days. And while he was away for those 30 days, he did a lot of studying and praying. This is one of the uh, most sacred spots. This, this place up here, before you get to the uh, hedge of trees, that's where uh, a cabin, where Nat Turner's wife lived with the children. Nat Turner's wife's name was Cherry. Okay. And she lived here with his children. And there's always been speculation about where Nat Turner was on the day that the revolt started. Mm -hmm. We have reason to believe he at least visited his uh, wife and children. So the cabin was right out here? It's right, it's right up here in the, at the edge of that field. And I have pictures of people coming and streaming up here, getting off of the bus down yeah. there and coming in like they're going to a pilgrimage. Uh, but one day, uh, I brought a tour group out here and we came up in here to visit the cabin as usual. And the cabin was down. Somebody had taking it down. Wow, so recently the cabin was still up here. Yes. But yes. somebody came and knocked it down. They, no, they didn't take it and knock it down. The same Francis family. Mm. Uh, the Turner family do not farm the land. Yeah. The land. The land is farmed. They rent this farm to the Francis family. Mm -hmm. And it's a big farm. This is uh, uh, the land over here. This land is owned it's a 380 track of land by Nat Turner's living descendants. They own that. Okay. Yeah, and it was purchased. Y'all was gonna say, how did they come to own it? It was purchased by the, uh, 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 a family member. Okay. Uh, Nat Turner's descendants survived because the Indians hid out a female member. Mm. And I had the good fortune of meeting Miss any reason you stop here? Oh, you want to keep going? Okay. You're going to go up, I'm going up here and, 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 and turn around and stop where the cabin was. Uh, but anyway, that, that's how it came in there. And then uh, a woman married a guy named Turner. Okay. And that's how they came into this land. 
nice. He bought the land. That's a blessing right there in itself. Man. Yeah, yes it is. That was very um and the land has a lot of stress. What they did, like like tearing this cabin down mm -hmm. and some of the other structures that was up that was on black land, mm -hmm. they convinced them to tear the structures down and then they started getting the money in to develop uh, the tool. Gotcha. You know, I was coming back down to the money, huh? Yeah, yeah. And from here, you you heard of the caves where he was finally uh -huh. recaptured. From here, the caves is straight back through these woods. Okay. Yeah. Now there was there was misconception on that. I heard somebody say a farmer found him, and I heard another story where somebody from the militia found him no, in no. a hole. So he he was away. He ran away. We're gonna go on back now and continue. Uh, he ran away for 30 days, mm -hmm. and while he was away, according to Nat Turner, he spent his time in fasting and prayer. Okay. And when you when you fast and and pray, you get proper knowledge of self. Mm -hmm. You get knowledge of self, and. It came to him what his mission was. He received uh, his first major vision while he was out there. And the vision said, and that turn I had a favorite biblical verse that he quoted. Uh, there, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all else will be added. The vision told him, the spirit appeared to him and told him he was too concerned about the things of this world that he should first seek the kingdom gotcha. and then all else would be added. Mm -hmm. But along with that came his vision mm -hmm. on what his mission, came his uh, mission mm -hmm. on what he was supposed to do. He realized what he had to do mm -hmm. and to fulfill his mission, he needed resources. Mm -hmm. He needed human resources and he needed weapons. Yeah. So the most readily available place to get both was back on the plantation. Gotcha. So he left and went back to the plantation. So he could see that mission through. Yes, gotcha. yes, to get those resources. And he went back to a, did a ridicule of his fellow captives. Mm -hmm. They ridiculed him, selling him. He was so smart. He was away. And he had returned. Right. That Why he would was you come a dumb, back? Yeah, right. he signified on him. Mm -hmm. He was just a dumb so and so. We got we got to get a little bit deeper into this man uh, because again, there's multiple stories going on. <laughs> there's another two of the clerk of the county, one of the highest elected officials, mm -hmm. is a uh, uh, is uh, the clerk of courts for Southampton County. Uh -huh. I know him. You know, he's he's a uh, he enjoys a particular status. Okay. Among black people. Okay. Uh, he, you know, he, his family is Francis. Mm -hmm. That was about the seventh by eighth family that was uh, attacked during the revolt. Mm. The only reason this guy is alive mm -hmm. is because a male member, male member was not at home. R Wiley Francis mm -hmm. was the name of that relative back at the time when Nat Turner was yeah. not at home. Whenever Nat Turner came through when their house. he came in, this guy's father founded an organization called the South Hampton County Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we came into the county in 1990, we knew where we were, and we found out soon enough about South Hampton County Historical Society, mm -hmm. who, to my understanding, didn't even have Nat Turner in their books. Wow. Once we started doing our work, then, of course, you know, they kind of came out with some stuff. But you have to give a man credit for what he make. Yeah. He mm -hmm. was not supposed to be the clerk of courts. When the old guy died, mm -hmm. the white people in here, they knew who they wanted to 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 take, take charge that. of that situation. But Rick Francis won. Mm -hmm. Black people elected Rick Francis. Oh, okay. This is majority black county. Okay, okay. And the first thing he did was integrate his office. First term. He integrated the office. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The city government is governed by a board of supervisors, by black people. Okay. But 
you go into these different offices, the departments and stuff, except for social services, mm -hmm. they didn't have it integrated. Gotcha. And he, he, hired, he, he made a secretary. So to me, so we're talking slave owners, yeah. uh, ancestors, yeah. okay, are running the uh, uh, government funded uh, tour for Nat Turner. Yeah, it, it's not uh, government funded. Okay, all right. Uh, the government, when they got the $500,000 matching grant, then I went over here to see uh, Dallas Green, Chairman Dallas Green, who helped to lay bricks on my house. He's mm -hmm. the chairman of the Board of Supervisors mm -hmm. here, and he's my neighbor. Nice. So I went in there and asked about their money. That mm -hmm. was I entitled to any of that money? Right. He said no. They wrote wow. a they wrote a grant for that for that money. Wouldn't that be? But to me, it seemed like it would kind of be a slap in the face to um, have the uh, the slave owners' ancestor to do a tour right alongside of you and them to be able to get a, a grant. I'm just asking this, just putting it out in the wind. It's, it's private funding. You know? Right, so they can get whatever. So they, that's what he told me. Okay. They wrote a grant to get that. Okay. But they wanted the government to uh, match the grant. Gotcha. And they wouldn't match it. Gotcha. So I don't know what happened to it after that. I don't know if they got a match someplace else. Gotcha, okay. And I didn't read any places all that right. they can. All I know is they're doing a lot of building mm -hmm. and they're going ahead with developing the tool Mm -hmm. From that Turner Trail tour, mm -hmm. they right now they they intend to uh, they see it's been long enough from the time of Nat Turner where now they can make some money on this legacy. Right. And and if we were not here doing our work, mm -hmm. you know, they would have a cakewalk. Exactly. They could they could they thought they thought they could do what they did with Malcolm X. Gotcha. You know, they hated Malcolm X, man. Mm -hmm. But then when they thought they could make some money, they. Let's go ahead and pull him back yeah, in here. Yeah, but well, Nat Turner's a mm -hmm. little different. Mm -hmm. His story is so documented. That you can't really lie too much? No. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to break, but I just wanted to bring that up because I think that it's very important, being that we're talking about legacy, why we should hold on to our stories and make sure that we tell it. You know what I mean? Yes. Make sure that we pass on to our youth the right story and make sure that we support each other to make sure that legacies are held together. Yes. So just want to make that clear and just know, you know, when you come out to do a tour here, Mr. Yeah. Khalifa is the guy to see. Yeah. But can I, can I, no, I, go I ahead. know I didn't address myself to your mm -hmm. full question, mm -hmm. the South Hamilton County Historic Society. Uh, I happen not to begrudge them telling that side of the story gotcha. in that Turner. Mm -hmm. I know I know white people are gonna do what they do. Mm -hmm. I, and and I know Khalifa's gonna do what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, and and, and, if, uh, and I know Nat Turner visited something tough on their family. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they do yeah. have a story to tell. Okay. But they don't have our story to tell. Right. To them he was a villain. Mm -hmm. To us he was a hero. And gotcha. will always be a hero. That's clear. That's it. So Nat Turner would we take analysis of what's going on, okay. and he would come up with a solution. He okay. came up with a solution as a child of slave. Mm -hmm. And the power, but the power of that brother, man, the power of Nat Turner was so awesome. He a man in child of slavery. Wow. With the wisdom, the genius mm -hmm. to overcome his own fear mm -hmm. and get these other up to a hundred soldiers mm -hmm and organize a black liberation army and, and convince them to overcome their fear mm -hmm. of this brute. Mm -hmm. This guy, he's always, he, he's been more deadly, man. He was just openly killing them, mm -hmm. brutalizing them. Mm -hmm. But he got people to overcome that fear. What a man, what a power, the power of yeah. that turn up. Yeah. Good. Grace well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. This is the Vadio Show, and that's the difference. But keep that legacy going. Hey, for more of the Vadio Show, log on to thevadioshow.com. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube, at the Vadio Show.